Hey, shout out to Footballer's Diary. Shout out Footballer's Diary. We have Jaden Dow with us, the new uh, pick for first round pick for Columbus Crew. Thank you so much for being here, bro. Oh, yeah. Thank you as well for having me here. So I'm grateful. No, absolutely, man. It's really exciting to have you. Um, I actually did a uh, breakdown of the draft, and you were one of my uh, top picks. Um, and I always say, like, I like the pick that is a first-round pick because it's like, you know, you're official, you're a first-round pick, but it also leaves something to be said. Like, you almost fell to the perfect team, you know, obviously. And you also were – were you surprised to go where you went? Uh, I would say f there was, I was, I was definitely surprised, but at the same time, it's not something that was out of the ordinary. Cause like, I knew I had prior interest from the crew, but as far as like before the draft, like the teams I spoke to, I didn't even have an official phone call with the Columbus crew. So I really, uh, the main teams I talked to were Charlotte and uh, Tennessee. So I was expecting I was expecting to go to Charlotte, honestly, based off the way I, our conversation went. But before the draft, I saw they picked up a striker before the draft, and then they ended up trading up and getting a new striker. So from there, I was like, uh, I guess that's not the spot. So, But crew definitely showed interest. I didn't have a complete you know, conversation with them before the draft like you would with nor that you're normally supposed to have with other teams. But they had – Especially uh, going first round. Yeah, for sure. That was a huge shock to me as well, because when I was talking to my agent and others, they were basically saying, you know, you don't go to the biggest school in the nation. So obviously, like even me going to Duquesne, it's not like, you know, a Duke or a uh, Clemson type of program. So I was expecting second, third round to even go first round was a huge shock for me. And I'm truly, you know, blessed for that opportunity. So. No, absolutely. And, and we'll get it. Like I, You have a really interesting story from what I could research. Um, and I'm sure there's even more to it that's not available. But um, yeah. what did it feel like, you know, to because you, uh, you know, we'll definitely get into your, your story. But coming from the school you came from, uh, you know, but obviously having a really solid body of, uh, of, of work, you know, in the D1 and collegiate level. What did it feel like to go D1, man? Like, what was that like? I think uh, when I got my first D1 offer after coming out the transfer portal, I almost uh, cried, honestly, because it was like, you know, out of high school, I didn't have the looks that everybody had. Like, I didn't play in the development academy growing up or anything like that. So uh, it was hard. You know, all my friends, I saw people go D1 who were close to me, which in the back of my head, I'm like, dang, that really should be me. But at a certain point you just got to take it upon yourself to really do it you know what i'm saying so yeah so, so let's so if you could tell everybody a little bit about that right so wh where did you grow up playing yeah so i'm from uh, rockville maryland so it's like 20 minutes outside of dc maryland's a huge waterbed the whole dmv area for soccer i would say for sure like this year i think we had seven first round picks in the draft That's crazy so it's crazy like the talent level here is absurd so yeah, I just grew up playing around local local club teams. So actually, I ended up moving to the U.S. in the fourth grade. From I heard West that. Africa. I read that. Yeah, from West Africa. So back then, I was just playing on the streets, just playing without really no idea. Like obviously, you're a little kid, you want to go play professional soccer. But uh, when we moved to the U.S., we as a family, because we were new, so we didn't know how the system works, how to get yourself involved in anything. So eventually through the years, my parents definitely supported me throughout the whole process, but it was really up to me to figure out what I got to do to try and get myself to the next level. So I played for local clubs around the area. I had really good coaches growing up, mostly African coaches. And oh, then, awesome. uh, yeah, it was not until my junior, senior year where I said, okay, I need to check these rankings on God Soccer and be like, I need to join a – one of the better teams in the area for me to even get a chance to even get uh, looked at type of thing. 
So what was like the closest like academy team to you there? Would it be like, would it be DC United? There's a Bethesda's Academy also here now, but it's not through the MLS Next because they're not an MLS team, but Bethesda has an MLS Next team in Maryland, and then there's Baltimore Armor and DC's Baltimore probably. Armor, yeah, they're really good. Yeah, and then DC's a big one also. Okay, so so did you also play high school soccer? I did. I played all four years of high school soccer as well. What high school did you, you play for? I went to Richard Montgomery High School. Awesome, man. And so, all right, so you, you, um, it almost gives you another level of drive and, uh, which this continue, which pretty much is your story. Like uh, you, you figured this system out yourself. You had, you know, you know, less help than let's say, cause let's be honest in the U S soccer is somewhat of a, a privileged sport, uh, mm -hmm. for a lot of people where, you know, they get, you know, kind of carried to these, you know, academies and they've been had the best training stuff like that. So you figured out the system by yourself. You played high school soccer, um, and then you make it to D3 school. Can you tell us how that about that? Yeah, so I, growing up, like I didn't always have a lot of offers or looks. It was mostly like D3 schools, few NIAs, maybe a few D2 schools here and there. But as far as D1, I had minimal interest. So COVID hit me my senior year, which was the wow. year really think that I really was going to take off type of thing. Like that's when I really like grew into myself and I was really confident in how I was playing. And we had a few showcases coming up, not the, not like huge ones, but we had Bethesda cup, which is where mm -hmm. I did get recruited actually to go to Washington and Jefferson. But uh, we also had another one coming up because obviously my goal was to end up playing division one soccer. And that whole tournament ended up getting canceled where a lot of D1 coaches were planning on coming to watch me play in person. So I think that was a huge hit for me. But regardless, you know, everything happens for a reason that I am where I am because of, you know, how it's supposed to pan out. Yeah, what a crazy story, man. So what? So you get to, um, to, uh, uh, you get to college and you have a crazy first season. Um, can you tell us, like, was that just from the drive? Like, I you seeing, like, other players you might have thought were, you know, you, you were much better than, like, getting these offers? Like, what, like, you really went in very hard in your first season. Yeah. I mean, I knew I had the ability growing up throughout my whole life. I just didn't apply myself the best. And I think my junior year, there was not a day I think I went without training, like, two hours. And when I was training, it was hard, like, three sessions a day, you know, really putting in work. And when I got to Washington and Jefferson, I was like, they just came off of winning a pack championship. And I was like, you know what, this would be a good spot for me. They seem like they're a good team. So I went in there and knowing myself as a player, I want to go, I want to go into every situation. I already think I'm the best. Like that's just my right. personal opinion. So I went in there and I was, able to just produce and I really had a great year honestly my first year so I'm very grateful for that as well so d did you know going into the portal like okay like hey like you know I did really well here I'm probably gonna get a, a d1 uh pickup or it was still like up in the air at that point yeah no it was definitely still a nerve-wracking thing but luckily my coaches were really supportive of me which is something that you really don't see at the d1 level at all but <laughs> I think, so like if you're willing to transfer they were still offering me a chance you know to come back and still play for them so I'm very grateful for that but when I hit that portal it was really just oh, the whole recruiting process over for me obviously a few local teams probably heard about my name but it was still mostly me reaching out like I had a few phone calls with some pretty good schools but they ended up dying out but I'm happy it ended the way it did and being able to get an offer from Duquesne which was still so like you, so you were still doing the leg work even at that point yeah yeah I had a really good year and I thought for sure like after that like for sure like I won everything you could have won as a freshman coming in yeah so I, for sure I'd, I'd get you know some pretty good deal and offers but even then it was still hard because it's still a whole nother level to it so at that point you you were still reaching out to colleges and uh, coaches with like film and like uh yeah. and like uh emails and all that stuff yeah, yeah, for sure. Every day. That's amazing. So not only did, so that's interesting because I just assumed like, hey, like you were missed 
you know, by those schools going into uh, going into which you probably still were, but you you actually changed uh, your 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 training schedule and you're still reaching out to colleges. That shows like a different level of drive, but that's that's crazy. Yeah. So so you get you go D one. And uh, what? Well, also, I forgot to ask you this: Were you always like? What are you like? Six three, six four? Yeah, six. I'm six five. My coach would like six, to say six five. Oh, yeah, I'm like six four and a half. Like I'm pretty much six five. So I, they just say six five now. Wow, that's bro. That's crazy. So were you always that big in high school, or did you have like a, a late growth spurt? Yeah, I actually did. I was like five ten throughout. Like there was a time in middle school where I just didn't grow and all my friends were growing like crazy. And up until like sophomore, junior year, I swear I came home and I went to bed and <laughs> this is what my mom says. I went to bed and I woke up <laughs> six, six, four, six, five. It was crazy. That's, that's crazy. Like, and you know, I see that a lot where like for some reason in soccer, they like to pick up these like prodigies very early and like so these you know you have athletes that just have like late growth spurts and like you know for some reason a lot of soccer in the u.s they don't have the vision to look at that um so i always think that's interesting um mm -hmm. uh, man so one thing that i said in my uh, my uh video i did on the draft was that at the time i thought you were six four so it's even more impressive that you were six five so yeah. um i don't always love like big center backs and strikers because sometimes like they can't really pivot that well and like yeah. their feet aren't that good one thing that i um, immediately seen with you is that you you pivot really well and you have great feet um what like can you did you ever play like futsal or like obviously you said you grew up in africa playing in the street um yeah. you know playing pickup and stuff like what do you what do you um what do you credit that to yeah, for sure. So, I mean, growing up throughout my whole career, like when I was younger, I was always the best, like from a really young age, like I was really good, really fast. So I didn't really have to work on that technical side of the game, but there reached a point when people were hitting puberty way before I was and I was kind of mm -hmm. playing. So I just had to rely on, you know, being able to really play with my feet versus, you know, being able to just sprint by people, which is something I can do now because it's finally catching up with me. <laughs> so I think it worked out really well for me in that aspect. But for me, it was just always playing in the street, you know, everywhere, everywhere you go is there's always, you know, random kids on the road playing, playing soccer. So growing up in that kind of atmosphere, like it gives you, I wouldn't say you're born with talent in that sort of way, but for me watching kids, from a general aspect, you know, playing the game, loving the game without, you know, living in third world war countries, you know, with the passion that they have for it has driven me to really, you know, even push harder for me to just play soccer from a general aspect, you know, knowing that I have a chance that they will never even probably even get the opportunity to have. But yeah, no, from that aspect, it's for sure just me being, you know, I had a step back in terms of my development as far as me hitting you know puberty late and i really just had to rely on playing with yeah. my feet rather than yeah rather than just being able to run and stuff so yeah it, it's crazy you know when they talk about like destiny and stuff it's almost like all of that was you know destiny you know it's like even that if you would have been huge early on you wouldn't have had to develop that skill so that's really interesting to see you know all those little pieces that went into you you know going to you know, one of the best teams in the MLS, arguably the best team in the MLS. Um, and, and that's that's really that's really cool, man. So when you get to when you finally go D1, um, you you did well from start to finish there, too. Can can you tell us, like, what do you think is the reason? Um, is it that, you know, you had to do it yourself the whole time? What about you? goes into these you know the situations and you're like hey you know i'm gonna hit the ground running mm -hmm. yeah no when i always come into a new environment i just i don't know what it is but i always feel like i need to prove myself and that i belong wherever wherever i am but don't get me wrong like when i committed d1 it was a huge culture shock for me in terms of everything like it's a whole nother level 
like in terms of even the players on the team, like locker room conversations versus the locker room conversations at the D1. Like when I was at the D3 level, I'd go in the locker room. People are talking about the stock market and how amazing their classes are versus when you're at a D1, like everyone is so focused and ready to play in that aspect. So it was just a huge culture shock. But for me, it's like every time I step on the field, I want to prove to people that I'm the best. Even when I am not, like even when I first came into the Division One level, even when I'm not, in my back of my head, I still think this, regardless of our situation. And eventually, I'll eventually feel like in my what I believe is I'll, I'll get there or, or however long it'll take type of thing. That's awesome, bro. And so let me ask you. So you talked a little bit about your mom. Uh, do you come from a soccer family? Did your fa- family play soccer? So my mom was a three sport athlete at Tufts Ooh. University. So, I mean, she was athletic, but as far as um, really having one main sport, it wasn't necessarily soccer. But um, my dad, for sure, he's West African. He grew up playing soccer as well in the streets. But, you know, it's just it never really went anywhere with that. So I feel like it was more of the environment in which we grew up, which kind of transformed our family into that. Awesome, man. What does he think about, you know, you uh – you know the draft, like you make it in the draft first round. What is the what's the response been from the fam? Yeah, my mom started crying on draft day. I thought I'd be the one crying, but she was dead <laughs> in tears. My dad is real. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. More old school in that aspect, like very traditional African man. So he, mm-hmm. when he thinks professional soccer, the first thing he thinks about are like the big leagues and stuff like that. So I had to kind of explain to him more about you know what this means but he's still very grateful like this is something he's wanted to see happen like you know his whole life and he's been behind me throughout this whole process as far as soccer so he was very happy as well that's awesome man having that support system is um is so important like everybody I talked to like majority of them had like a good support system um can you tell us a little bit about like you outside of soccer like what do you like to do yeah, for sure. Outside of soccer is hard because I'm a very boring person in that aspect, but <laughs> I like uh, playing video games. Like, I'm a big FIFA guy, and uh, I don't know if this counts, but I also like going to the gym a lot, so that's also another thing. And just I'm a big music fanatic also, so I like listening to music a lot. Okay, who, who, who do you like? Who do you listen to? Uh, I'm a big Young Boy fan, big Drake fan. I like No Cap. There's a lot of artists. The list the list goes on. I list I don't like listening to sometimes to you know the big name artists because it gets overplayed after a while. So I like the yeah. songs that people don't really will hear every day type of thing. That's awesome, bro. Was there any like uh, standout experiences that you had like rivalries or like any standout experiences you had in college? Oh, the Wayne one I can think about is when I was playing D3 soccer and we were playing Grove City. So it wasn't really a rivalry, but it kind of turned into one. So like the first game we go there, this is right before playoffs. So we were already in playoff position and so were they. So we didn't know how everything was going to turn out. So we go into that game. We end up losing, uh, I think it was 1-0 or it might have been 2-1 actually, 2-1. So we lose. 2-1 2-1 to Grove City, and we get on the bus, like, the whole game, the other team was chirping, you know, their fans are crazy, like, reading out my Instagram captions to me, like, screaming, no. you know, crazy, <laughs> but uh, it's funny, so we went there for that game, and the draw comes out, and we ended up finishing under them, and we drew them again, so we go back to their uh, place again to play them back-to-back. And at this point in my head, it's like, there's no way we're going to the same spot, losing twice in my head, or losing yeah. twice in a row to the same team. So that we happened. really went there and just gave it to them. I think I had an assist that game and one goal to, like, clinch it. And just seeing the fans so angry, you know, screaming, I, I <laughs> love I love that. I love that aspect of the game. So I would say that was a huge rivalry for, for us or for me my first year. No, it, it's it's funny, man. Like, if you talk about, like, Maryland uh, soccer, uh, 
we always hear about how like the like the the school in Maryland is so crazy with like they do something similar where they like they know the players addresses and like yeah. you know they do crazy stuff you yeah know? And it's, yeah. it's um it's 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 really i think um important i think that area of the country like that northeast area may be you know one of the best areas in the country for soccer um, mm-hmm. do you feel like you've seen you know uh since you've uh you know kind of gone through the whole youth to now pro level have you seen soccer grow uh, in your community where you grew up? And, um, you know, what do you feel like, how do you feel like the state of soccer is, I guess I'd say? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think a lot of kids now are way more passionate and take it too serious, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, growing up, you have to remember also to have fun throughout the whole process. Like, this is a game. Like, you have to enjoy it. People yeah. want to that's so bad that they lose sight sometimes of what they, you know, thoroughly enjoy. So for me in that aspect, I don't think the level has decreased at all. Like Maryland's still one of the best, like my little brother, a kid on his team just committed to Georgetown the other day. So he's wow baller. Like there's a bunch of ballers in our area. For me, it's just in that aspect, like, you know, take some time, you know, obviously don't stop playing, but make sure you're still having fun while you do it. Don't be so driven towards success, you know, Focus on what you can do now and make sure you're still enjoying the process of, you know, just playing and enjoying your time like you're still young type of thing. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's a game, right? Like, you know, and and that might be where we have it a little wrong. I think you're right, because like if you see if you go to Europe or South America, it doesn't even matter if the kids play in an academy. They still play. You know, it's still, you know, they still just have fun with the game. Exactly. Exactly. So. So now you you know um, you going you going to the pro level. Uh, what has your what has the reaction been? Uh, have you um, when do you uh, show up for a training camp? Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, for sure. So there's a few meetings that I have to attend to in Miami as far as uh you know just rookie things. You know most rookies who get drafted have to go through these like classes just to prepare you for that level. And up until this point. We have to report around mid-January. It's not like a specific date given yet. They're still like, you know, in the works of all that. But uh, yeah, no, I've just been trying to take this day by day, keep doing what I've been doing as far as grinding. And once I'm there, it's just all about improvement because I know it's going to be a whole nother level and a whole nother challenge for me. And I'm ready to grasp it all because I know I'm going to come out of it way better than I even came in because I love being back at zero, which is something I love about the game of soccer. It's like you can be on top of the world in a second and then, oh, something changes. You're back to the bottom and you have to work for it. A new challenge always emerges. Type of thing. I can be honest and say I've never heard anybody say that. <laughs> really? But it's, yeah, man. Like, you know, I think people have fear of that. But you're right. If you yeah. are comfortable with that kind of like chaos almost, and it's yeah. almost like just, it's not even really chaos. I think you I think you explained it very well. Like, you know, if you're okay with being able to, you know, reach a plateau and then start all over again, and it just becomes part of your process, I think that you've developed, uh, it's almost like a formula that works no matter where you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. People need to learn, I feel like, to deal with adversity more. Like, obviously, it takes a toll on you eventually, but that's when you have to really figure out who you are as a person, whether how bad you really want to be successful in that aspect. Like you're going to get knocked at, like it happens to everyone. Like, and for me, it's just about trying to reach my full potential. Cause I know I still have so much more to improve on, which is for me, like, I just, I know it's cliche. Kobe says this, but he said this quote and it's like, I was willing to chase perfection. Like, I forget the rest of the quote, but while even, though it's, not, even were, though it's not obtainable. Exactly. Even though it's not obtainable. And I think that quote suits perfectly for me because I'm I, every time I train, it's just all about me trying to be perfect in every aspect of the game. So that for sure. So, so you mentioned like, you know, um, that you kind of you know, grew up with pickup soccer and, you know, you've had to use your skill um oversized because of you know the late puberty and everything um mm-hmm. what does like what does your what do you focus on or maybe even advice what would you tell someone to focus on um 
if you were to pick like one thing that you feel like was maybe like the, one of the determining things that helps you succeed? Yeah, for me, ultimately, it's just being disciplined. Like every day, you know what you what it depends what you want. Like, let's you want to be a professional soccer player in that aspect. You have to have that discipline to go out there and train every day and, you know, lift or whatever you have to do that's going to help you improve to become a better soccer player, like formulate some sort of schedule for you. Because at the end of the day, it's only like four hours max out of your whole day, which you still have time to do whatever you want. So having that discipline to still get what you need to do done in order to feel accomplished, I feel like that's the biggest thing. Yeah, that's that. That's something that's also like it's across the board. And I think a lot of people miss that. They think it's some sort of like, you know, mm -hmm. move that they have to learn or like, you know, I don't know, like some athletic yeah. level they have to get to. But mm -hmm. those like incremental, you know, things that you do every single day seem to be more yeah. important than, than anything else. Yeah, no, as far as like the moves and stuff, don't get me wrong. But as you progress through these higher levels, you'll like, believe me, I love being a skillful player, but when it comes to being straight up an effective player, I had to cut out almost half of my game, which I was able to do at other levels. So just focus on the basics and just get super good at them. No, that's awesome, bro. Is there anybody like, um, you obviously named your parents and a few coaches. Is there anyone, um, is there anyone else that you would like a, a credit for helping you get here that you'd like, you know, to talk about? Uh, yeah, for sure. Like other than my, there's these two guys I train with every day. Like it's really fun when you get to train with someone who uh, shares the same passion and dreams as you. Uh, my two friends who I train with almost every day who have been me throughout this whole process. Like we always talk about, you know, when we're pro because we always manifest it kind of thing. So my boy who's playing at St. Mary's College, Elliot, right now, Elliot Hodges, and then my other friend who just finished his uh senior year at howard who also played on the saudi arabian national team actually his name's abdullah so yeah, those are I, my yeah boys. I, he yeah. also plays uh usl too right and yeah. and uh in maryland yeah, yeah i know exactly yeah. what you're talking about good player very good player mm -hmm. um that that's interesting man so this network you created how like how in how important is it for a athlete a player to to network because I see some people who, you know, like they're on social media and they like they network with other players. And then you guys, you know, there's definitely some people who are introvert by nature and they're like, no, nah, I don't want to be on social media. No, nah, I don't need to network. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's for sure, especially now, like nowadays, like it takes one video for you to blow up and you automatically like regardless if it's recruiting, getting recruited to play somewhere or if it's just finding people to train with every day. Like for me, lucky enough. I grew up with these guys, so they were already in my area. So we grew up friends type of thing, and we just both happened to share this passion of soccer. So that was for me. And then eventually it broadens. Like, they have friends. I have other friends. And, you know, you end up organizing these big pickup groups and such like that. But it's definitely important to, you know, reach out to other people and see where they're at and who they know. Because you never know. Like, a random person walking down the street could be a, a scout for all, for all I know. And they're just yeah. walking around, uh, watching you guys play pickup one day. Maybe you, you get lucky or something like this. So I feel like it's important to just build a bunch of connections through the soccer world, regardless if you think you'll need these people or not in the future. That's something that I think I was taught to during the recruiting um, process. Because for me, like I would reach out to so many schools and I'd get blown off, you know, not even an answer by a lot of these schools. So for me, even if a school answers me, for me, I feel like I have to just even say thank you, regardless if they want me or not. Just thank the coach for even, you know, responding to my email, because that's just something I think I had to take upon myself as far as I want to be a respectful person. Not saying these coaches aren't respectful, but, you know. You never know where they're going to be in the future. Exactly. You never, never know. So I just thought about something. Um so your boy plays for Howard. I think you guys play Howard, right? Like that's on your schedule. Have you guys played each other? Played each other twice. <laughs> yeah. Yo, so so you guys you guys grew up together, right? And you you got yeah. to play each other in college. What was that like? Oh, so freshman year I was playing striker and we had to go to them. And I think 
so I actually scored that game, but they called it uh, a goal line clearance, which still pisses me off to this day. <laughs> so, uh, but no, it's always a blessing being able to step on the field with someone you grew up your whole life. Like, and for me, I have some sort of, I have a really high uh, competitive edge when it comes to playing against people, especially people that I know. I just want to, you know, make them really feel it. So when we go back home and have a talk about it, they'll really, they'll really know what, what really happened that game. And the second time we played them, we smacked them like 7-0, and it was amazing, like amazing. Oh, man. So he can't even go home and feel good. Like, it's – No. <laughs> you got to let him know every time. <laughs> oh, yeah. He knows every time we talk about schools, he just has to stay quiet in the corner. Yeah, but how is such a, like, historic, uh, you know, university, man, winning a national championship? Uh, really, really awesome school. Yeah. Um, so, so talk, so going back home to Maryland, where are some places where you're like, oh, I like there's, you know, is there uh fields or places people go to play? Like what's the scene in Maryland? Like, yeah, for sure. So as of now, I either train at my uh, high school that I grew up in, especially now it's kind of hard with kids still being in school, but luckily it's a uh, winter break right now. So there's no school. So the fields are just open. So I just go to my local high school, or there's also another high school close by. And we have this thing in Maryland called the So Five. So it's like this indoor soccer arena, which mm-hmm. I probably won't be going anytime soon just because I don't want to get hurt. But uh, growing up, I'd always go there. It's like a small indoor 5v5, you know, kind of like a little less than half of a field, turf field. And it's just highly competitive over there as well. Like a lot of ballers play. So is it like a is it like um you pay and it's like winter stays yeah. or you go with your boys yeah. make teams? That's exactly. You pay, I think it's like ten dollars and then you know, normally you come with a full team, but if not, you know, there's people there so you can just pick up random people and if you win you stay on, you know, first to two goals. So it's a fun little fun little place. That's awesome, man. So what are so moving forward, man, what are your goals? What do you what do you plan to, you know, do for the future? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I always say this, like, soccer is my number one priority and has always been. So as far as long term, I don't really want to get too far ahead of myself, but I just want to turn into the best player I can possibly be. Like, not really focus too much on, you know, the accolades and all of this, all of these things that come with it. But I just want to be able to be the best soccer player I can be. And I want to be able to help crew, obviously, win another championship. And but as far as my first year goals, uh, goals, you know, hopefully I can come in, get some good minutes playing either some get some exposure to first team football, even though it might not be right away. But I want to come in and, you know, really be able to prove myself and show people that, you know, I belong here. Well, I definitely think you do, man. And um, hearing your story uh, and getting to kind of to know you, the process that you created is is. Uh, is such a it's so healthy and refreshing to hear about uh because you know sometimes we do lose sight that it's a game but there mm-hmm. also is this this um confidence that you have uh in your process and and in who you are which seems to come from your family and you know just kind of going from the bottom every time whether it be at youth level going to college and just being completely fine with that that is kind of amazing to me mm-hmm. um if you uh do you have any message for the crew fans? Oh yeah, I'll for sure say thank you guys for all the love I've been getting so far up until this point and I promise you guys I will not disappoint. That's awesome, bro. Man, I really have had a great time uh talking to you. Um if you uh hopefully in the future you can get back on once we uh you've been in there for a few years and we can talk about how you were right about everything. Uh, sure. And I wish you the best of luck, man. For sure. No, thank you so much for having me. It was fun. It was a fun experience right here.